I got to take some time out to thank this defense, and uh, this is our entire team, but I'm looking at the defense right now, man. We, we're we playing great football. Um, I will get to Dak and that offense pretty soon, man. Um, this caption says the ball is his friend because, as we all know, uh, Trayvon Diggs is special, man. And uh, we'll get into that a little later. I just wanted to show you he's always, and that's one time he touched the ball. I ain't even count that one, but he's always near the ball. Uh, shout out to the Giants. They were a feisty team, especially that kid, Ladarius Tony. It's probably because his name's Darius like me, but, uh, you know, he's he's definitely a uh, a feisty cat, man. I like how he plays. I like how vicious he was. His moves were pretty sick. So I'll give him his credit where credit is due. Um, but the attitude that we showed in this game, especially on this play right here, I mean, all this was, I'll show you how this all started too. But the attitude and the mentality that we have is totally different. And I want to take you guys back to where we um, where we had um, Red Rifle last year get his head knocked off uh, by the Redskins. And nobody came to his aid. Nobody was excited. Nobody cared. It's like everybody was playing for their checks. These guys are totally different. I mean, either guys are rooting for each other or pulling for each other or fighting for each other. Shout out to Steele. He's not in this one. He'll be in the offensive side. But uh, Terrence Steele is a mean dude, man. He, I saw him diving on the pile, hurting guys too, trying to, you know, get them off of Connor Williams. So the entire team, top down, you know, offense and defense, were just fighting, man. And let's look, let's look at this play again. I mean, the moves that this kid can put on, I mean, he's, he's like this kid I used to play against named Carnell. You know, you couldn't touch him even if you were right in front of him. But uh, uh, he takes a cheap shot at KZ. I, I, I don't really understand. That doesn't make any sense. KZ tries to break his neck, too, as he should. Um, but um, he de it doesn't make any sense because he doesn't really understand what's really going on. I know he thought he got pushed by KZ, which he did, but it wasn't sparked by KZ, and I'll show that in a second. Um, right there, Ingram pushes uh, KZ as well, and you see Kurt step right in there, and that's what I mean by the camaraderie and the attitude that these guys have. And you'll see Anthony Brown, too, dripping up uh, Henderson. Right here, this is where Rudolph comes in, and, and he hits the pile. And when he does that, he hits KZ, and KZ just fed up with it. So he just tosses him, which he shouldn't have did, but he did it. Then, you know, he gets pushed by Ingram, and then it's just on, man, um, from there. And, you know, I, I'm all for football like this. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I really don't. I don't really fight that. I, I, I kind of like it. Uh, because it just shows that these guys are ready to, to play and they're nasty. They don't like the opposition as they shouldn't. Um, this this next segment, though, man, I'm going to talk about for a second. Number 30, man, Anthony Brown. Um, they, they tried to play with him a little bit in this game, too. They were picking on him due to the fact that they kept get, he kept giving up those underneath routes, man. The entire secondary, you know, stepped up and really was making plays all over the place. Shout out to Hooker as well. Hooker was making pretty good plays. Uh, throughout the game, he's making good tackles, um, you know, where they were throwing those hitch routes on him, and he was solid. Look at the attitude there on that same drive, though. Look at KZ, man. Look at what you got to do to deal with this guy, and he's the smallest of the entire crew. I mean, smaller than Jordan Lewis, smaller than AB. He's smaller than our cor all of our corners combined, and he plays with the biggest heart. So it ain't about the size of the fight and the dog, man. It's just, I mean, it's, it, ain't, it ain't about the size of the dog and the fight. I'm sorry. It's the size of the fight and the dog, man. Because uh, this dude is is a straight dog. I love him. I think the Cowboys fans uh, are now starting to embrace him as they should, because he's a vicious dude who plays, you know, all out. And and everyone that I've ever seen come up against him, whether it's legal or illegal, you feel it. You feel it when he hits you. You feel it, and he's playing all out. He rips Booker's helmet off and then just lands on his head. So you know he feels that today while I'm talking. When he watches this replay. And when he watches this 10 years from now after we, you know, you know, hopefully do what I think we can do this year, he'll think about that. I'm like, I know what that felt like. You know what I mean? Uh, there's Tony again. Like I said, they are picking on Anthony Brown, uh, trying to pick on him this game. He played well in coverage, though. He wasn't giving up a ton of yards. I think, uh, honestly, um, you know, he, he, he played one of his better games once again. But if you look at this pick six again, man, he, bait, he baited the uh, quarterback, uh, Glennon, into throwing that for the third time, because that was like the third comeback route that they tried against him. Anthony was just ready for it this time. Shout out to Al Harris for, for coaching these guys up, as, along with Quinn and Joe Witt, all those guys, man. You can see the difference in this team just with the coaching and some new additions here and there. And I don't want to hear, oh, you know, you know, new additions only, because it's not just Parsons, it's not just Osa, it's not just Chauncey. Those guys are rookies, not just Cox. Those guys are rookies. Somebody has to coach them. So, 
the coaching staff, the coaching staff definitely gets the most of the credit when it comes to the turnaround that we've had uh, defensively. I haven't seen this team, this balance, this good. I don't think ever, other than the Super Bowl runs, and even then, I don't think the defense was this damn good. And I don't mean when it comes to having Dion. I know we had Dion for a second, but this defense is special, man. All up, uh, you know, top down, and we were pretty good then too. So don't no disrespect to the to those '90s teams. I'm just saying I haven't seen it in 25 years. No matter what your opinion is on how long it's been and who's better, it doesn't matter. We haven't done anything in this era yet, so they actually are going to win that coin toss it for the '90s teams. That is, but you know we have some special ball players, man. Like Dion is one of the best cornerbacks ever to play this game. But so is Diggs if he keeps playing like this. That was number one right there. He got his hand, both hands on the ball almost every time they threw at Galladay. I think Galladay had one receptor, one one um, target that he wasn't governing him on. But other than that, every time they threw at at him in Galladay, this is what happened. I mean, this is freakishly eerie special play out of out of uh, Diggs, man. Look at this. He runs the route for Galladay. I mean. That looks like a receiver going for the ball. And did, if he didn't hop and just decided to run through that route, he would have had an interception there too. So that was four times he touched the ball in this game with both hands. He caught one. So honestly, I mean, it's not a far, far fetch. He could have nine interceptions right now, uh, literally. Uh, and realistically, if you just count the one that he just got his hands on and the one that he caught that he didn't get his feet down, on, then it, you, could be, you could say eight. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> we're in the we're in the fifth game. We played five games. He could literally have eight interceptions. He's had a good season right now. If he sits down now, he's had a great season for a corner. Period. Period. Tackles included. Period. So shout out to Trayvon Diggs. I'm I'm very pleased and impressed, and I'm honored and blessed to be able to sit here and witness this uh, while this player is playing in the Cowboys uniform, man. Because uh, he can be playing anywhere. We got him late in the first round, I believe. Maybe second round, actually. I'm sorry. And it, the kid's just amazing, man. Uh, I put this up here because Daniel Jones was getting a lot of accolades coming into this game. And he didn't do much against us. And this is before we knocked him out of the game. I don't advocate guys getting injured. So I hope that he's, I mean, well, seriously injured. So I hope that he's okay. But, um, you know, we came and and it says something. Not only did we have an attitude when it comes to, you know, that fight that you saw, we had an attitude. Period, man. Uh, uh, Saquon, we didn't mean to do that to him. Uh, Daniel Jones, Galladay did not finish the game, and neither did um, Ladarius uh, Tony. Why? He threw a punch. But either way, if we were all over Daniel Jones all day. You see, Michael Parsons. That looks like a replay because you're gonna see that all day. Parsons is ungodly good as well because I, I, I gave Jalen credit for the way he was spying Hurts in that game. But look at the way he's spying and helping out in the backfield against Jones. He didn't get these sacks, but a lot of these things uh, that you see going on in the backfield, like you see knock Soldiers down right there. Soldiers is a good uh, uh, tackle, but he, he knocks him down just to, just to kind of pave the way for the stunt, and he didn't mean to knock him down. Randy Gregory frees up due to that. Then you got Osa. Uh, and if Parsons is ungodly good, then what does that make Osa? Because Osa's making just as many plays, uh, if not more, you know. So the the rookies that we have here, man, we have four rookies that are contributing on a consistent basis, well, or five, because Bohanna as well, that are contributing on a consistent basis on that defense, man. And uh, it's amazing. Um, a lot of people were asking, myself included, why convert Neil to linebacker? Why bring him here? And this is why you bring him here. Neil has proven himself to be an enforcer. He was out due to COVID. I'm happy to have him back because he hits the way Roy Williams used to, man. And uh, I like seeing that. But he's not the only one, though. Everybody on this defense really will clobber you, but he's one of the, the more consistent strikers. Him, KZ, uh, those guys will knock your head clean off, man. And uh, I, I mean, I don't want to see him get hurt doing it, but I, I really was enjoying that. Uh, Daniel was still trying though, as you can see, he was he was still going. This is that drive right there. They they were going. That's that seam route that we were talking about. That little comeback route in the seam. I told you that that's what you would see and that's what you saw. Uh, but once we got to the uh, the they score on this drive, but uh, once we got to the goal line, it got special, man. Look at Micah Parsons. You don't, he doesn't get blocked on that when he breaks this up. 
so that those guys can rally to the ball there. Great way to rally the ball, Urban, um, Curse, all those guys. And then look at here, boom. Uh, you will not pass this dude. You're not going to run right by him, man. He like Gandalf. <laughs> You shall not pass for sure, you know, and that's that's real. I, I like what we're seeing with Micah Parsons. I think obviously he's an upgrade from Jalen, but you know, I really, I, I really did like Jalen. I'm not gonna lie. But if you're gonna get rid of the guy, get rid of him for a guy like this, man, for sure. Uh, you saw LVE in on that play as well. Did a did a great job on that particular play. LVE actually had a pretty good game too. I, I have to give him his credit. Um, I didn't have as many highlights because it weren't really splat big plays but he he had his moments where i thought the lv was always in the right place in the right time and then here we go with cox man all of our rookies were contributing cox knocks daniel jones into next week literally uh you know you got osa parsons chauncey and cox on the field on this goal line drive and that shows the trust that we have in these young guys man so there's a lot that that we have to look forward to with this defensive unit uh because they're only getting better they haven't really been able to shut guys out yet, and they're only getting better, and they're already pretty damn good at getting Dak the ball back, man. Like I said, I hope Daniel Jones is pretty good, but uh, he was definitely going out for one of those uh, snicker commercials on that one, man. He was he did not know where he was uh, at all, and uh, like I said, I hope he's okay. And they protect quarterbacks pretty well, so I feel like he'll you know he'll bounce back and he'll be fine. But you know, next week we got the Patriots, man. Here's Anthony Brown again, like, and 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 let's let's give it to him. The only the only touchdown he gave up was to AB. He hasn't given up any other touchdowns. Every time they they see him in the in the red zone, they try to go after him, and this is what happens. He did this against the Chargers, where you know he was able to uh, stop that that drive at the end of the game, and we won the game there. And I did it again. I mean, this wasn't a game winner, but uh, you know, I think that was I think that was incidental contact. But I don't care what it was. Anthony, appreciate you, man. But uh, we're going to work on the offense next, people. You okay? I'm fine. Let's go. Hold on. Where are you? I'm in New York. Who am I? Hey, come. And who are you? I'm Batman. Sit down. You don't understand. I'm Batman. I do. I do. Not going anywhere for a while? Grab a Snickers. Hello, good citizen. My name is Batman. You could be my assistant. Would you like that? Would you like to ride with Batman? <laughs> <laughs>